I found a way to make game development easy. That's right. You can actually make a game easily. I've put together four points to show you how you can turn game development from a form of mental torture into a, a form of mental torture that doesn't hurt as much. It doesn't hurt as Let's start with point one, keeping it simple. I've invited a friend of mine to come and help me explain what keeping it simple can help do for your game. Take it away, Alex. Thank you for having me, Corbin. For those who don't know who I am, I'm Alex Rack2, or Alex Rack2 the dev on YouTube. I'm developing a multiplayer FPS, but unfortunately me and Carbon are in the same boat as in having to restart our projects. So Carbon asked me to say a couple words in the video to help you guys not make the same mistake we did. The reason why I had to restart my project was due to not planning properly and winging development. I was developing my game for around 4-5 to five months, but really no idea on what the game was going to be. Then once I finally realized what I wanted it to be, it was too late. The game was developed with a different structure than what my idea needed. Therefore, a question to ask yourself before developing is, what exactly is my game and what are the goals you have in mind? A good workflow to pre-development can be the reason you finish a game or the reason you give up halfway. So a couple tips on what you can do to enforce a positive workflow is starting a GDD, also known as a game design document. These are essential to any studio before the actual development of a game. A GDD helps you picture the gameplay, keep the scope to a minimum, and helps you really get an idea for your game. You want to find what makes your game different and build off of that. Think about a football game or any sports game. Imagine if a team goes into a game with no game plan compared to a team that has a plan and a goal in mind. The team that planned will obviously come out with a greater outcome. You don't necessarily have to build the entire game off of it, but try and make it a core point. The planning period is where you really create the game and find what's unique about it. Compare your game to games already out there and ask why would a player want to play my game over this game? Is it unique? Is it a copy with a slight twist? As a player, I wouldn't want to buy a game or play a game that's already been out there. A good example would be CSGO and Valorant. The game mode is pretty much the same, but Valorant made their game unique by introducing characters and abilities. That's the kind of feature that gives a game their uniqueness and makes it a competitor and not just a copy. Thanks a lot, Alex. Now, the last thing you're going to want to do in this section of keeping it simple is to find your core game loop. What I like to do is divide it into parts, starting with what does one minute of gameplay look like, then five minutes, then ten minutes, then maybe half an hour, then an hour. And once you've figured out what that gameplay will look like after each set amount of time, you can better understand how the final game loop will play. You're going to want your core game loop to be varied. Pacing is very important in games so the players don't get bored. A game that manages to pace itself really well is Doom. Doom has a mix of fighting, platforming, and cutscenes and story parts. As much as we all love tearing through hordes of demonic creatures, if the game was just fighting 100% of the time, the player would get burnt out pretty quickly. So to counteract this, there are platforming sections which focus less on the combat and more on the movement mechanics the player has at their disposal. Then to give the player a break from being head in the action all the time, they can head back to the Fortress of Doom, which acts similar to a hub world where there is no platforming or combat, but you can unlock new abilities or upgrades, etc. All of this gives a better core game loop that's varied enough that the player does not get bored or burnt out. The second point is developing tools. But why would you need tools? Tools help avoid repetition and other tedious tasks. They're also very helpful for the long run, or even other games that you might end up working on in the future, because a tool you might work on in one game is a tool that you can carry over into another project and use somewhere else as well. Tools can also be created by other people. There are a lot of other people who have made tools that are either free or are purchasable, either on the asset store or somewhere else on the internet. Some good examples of free tools that I use are Mixamo, I use for animations, Quixel, for materials and textures, Blender for modeling, sculpting, and texturing, and Photopea for graphic design. You can find the links to all of these in the description. Using tools is probably the best thing you can do to increase your efficiency when you're working on a game. So 
definitely take some time to make some. Polish will really help when it comes to making a fun and satisfying game. This is something I personally struggle with a lot, and I know I need to start paying more attention to it, but I'm just too lazy to do it and quite frankly scared of some of the problems I might accidentally create. It creates this sensation of dread within me, so instead of me talking about it, I got my good buddy Gilbert to come talk about it for me. Off to you Gilbert, or Gilbert, or Gilberto. I don't know, man, but I'm handing the mic off to you. Hello, everybody. I am Gilbert from the channel Gilbert. I'm here today in Carbon's basement to discuss game polish. Polish is usually one of the last steps in game dev, but it's also one of the most important. Just take a look at the most successful games, and you'll see why lots of them are so successful. I have three tips for polishing up your games. Keeping things minimal. Don't fill your projects with so many features that you don't really need. Try to keep it simple while also keeping it interesting. Your game doesn't need to be triple A with endless tasks to complete. Most people are okay with just simpler indie games as long as they are fun and affordable. Keeping it simple means you can spend more time on the core game. Art and graphics. This tip ties in with making your game simple. Unless you are part of a very big team or you're just talented with modeling and texturing, I would recommend keeping the art style of your game easy and minimal. An art style that is consistent that you can easily manage. The small things. I know I said keep your game simple, but don't forget the little things that are easy to put in and hard to get wrong. Make more game objects interactable. For some, it could take 10 minutes or less to include and really separates your game from all the others. This has been your pal Gilbert. Back to you, my little string bean. So the four points you're going to want to focus on to ensure that your game is being developed efficiently and correctly are keeping it simple, polishing, giving yourself small goals and deadlines, and developing tools. Taking all these points into consideration, I can guarantee a much faster and cleaner workflow and less debugging in the long run. That's all the time I have for this video though. Thanks to Gilbert and Alex for helping me out. Definitely check out their channels. I put the links in the description down below. Thanks to all of you for watching and I'll see you next time.